everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with a different style of tutorial today. Today, what you can see in front of you is, well, non-GW product. <laughs> Bet you weren't expecting that. No, what we have in front of us is the 12-inch Dwarven Deus, or Dias, or however you're supposed to pronounce it. And this is from a company called Dark Fantastic Mills. I've been a long admirer of their terrain pieces, and I really wanted to get hold of this because this is what's called a scenery splat. It's flat. It's flat scenery. Isn't that cool? It's uh, 3D printed, I believe. Yeah, you can see from the underside. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to paint this today because I want to show you a couple of techniques for painting stone like this really, really quickly, really, really simply. And this is going to be the new base for all of my spinny shots. So the like bits that go at the beginning of all of my videos and at the end and also where we're going to be starting to put our product photography so for example if we just take the avatar here and put him there it looks pretty darn cool now it comes in a couple of different formats and i've gone for the 12 inch dwarven dais what you can do is you can just buy this central piece six inches it's pretty good you could use that as an objective marker if you wanted but just basically that's the center point there it's very useful for filming purposes. As I said, you can just pick that as your mark, put that guy right in the middle, and it's going to spin nicely like that. Really, really cool. But it comes in two different variations as far as I can figure out. We've got the 6-inch, and then we've got the 12-inch version. It comes in these sort of jigsaw puzzle pieces. And when you put it all together, you literally just clip stuff like that. Jobs are good and sometimes it just takes a little bit of maneuvering. That can still spin around. And then you can set up some absolutely awesome dioramas like that sort of thing with a Infernal Master and an Emperor's Champion. It gives you a really cool little way to present your miniatures and also a cool little presentation. So we're gonna be painting this today. I'm gonna to show you how I'm gonna do it very quickly. Now you could use this for any kind of terrain that you might be painting or any kind of stonework or any large boards or anything like that that you might have to do in your to-do list or that you might be thinking of building this is going to be a really simple very easy method of doing something like this it's been primed in Mechanicus standard gray and then i've just very lightly gone over in patches with some grace here as well so you can see here 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 and here and this gives a bit of variation on the piece which is really very very nice massive 12 inches in diameter i've probably already said that several times so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our paints grab our brushes and then we're going to get started so the place to start with a piece of terrain like this is to add the shade in because we're going to be layering up to come to a really kind of scratched stone authentic weathered look so what we're going to do is we're going to start by adding some depth and shadow now it's nice and big so we don't have to go all over and then do any re-layering what we can do is we can just do a recess shade on these pieces. Now, we don't need to do in amongst these kind of, this edge around here, and we don't really, really need to do around where these guys connect. You can see around here like this. You can if you want to, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be focusing on kind of more the areas around the kind of solid pieces of the terrain. Now I'm gonna be using two colors for this. I'm gonna be using Basilicanum Gray and I'm gonna be using Black Templar. And what I've got is got a medium layer brush here, and I'm going to start with some Basilicon and Grey. And I'm just going to start running this into all of the areas of recess, like that. Nice and simple. It doesn't have to be totally accurate. Because this is not looking for smooth clean rock we're looking for something that's well it's been it's been used quite a lot so we're just going around filling in these areas with this basilicum gray Like this. Then what we're going to do is wash the brush and then we're going to grab some black templar 
I'm going to use that almost at the same time. But we're just going to use that to do a couple of different ones. We're going to add that in whilst it's still drying to certain little areas. Like this, just to create a bit of variation in our design and in our shading. Make sure to wash the brush so you don't contaminate your pots. back to Basilicarnum Grey here. Just like that. So with that done, you should have a dwarven dais or stonework, whatever it is you're working on. It looks somewhat like this. It looks a little bit goofy at the moment. Of course it does, because we've just done some very, very haphazard recess shading. But what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of try and make that look a lot better. So we're going to start with some dawnstone. We're going to be using stippling techniques. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little bit of tissue paper. This bit I've used some tarant skull on and we're just going to move that one out of the way just for the moment we're going to grab our medium dry brush this one it's quite a ratty old one and i'm going to take some dawnstone on my brush like this and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start working it into the paper by just dabbing it in until it gets to the consistency that i like that sort of thing will work for me and then i'm just going to go on to the onto the dais and I'm going to start stippling this all over just like this. And I'm going to be building this up very slowly as I go. After we've done that with Dawnstone, I haven't done all of it just yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to swap over to Administratum Grey. And we're just going to start doing the exact same thing, building this up. Over the top. So with that done, as you can see, I've done exactly half of the area and you can see the difference between the two stipples. So this hasn't had any stippling done. This has had Dawnstone and the Administratum Grey done. Because what we're gonna do, and I just wanted to demonstrate just how effective this can be because sometimes it doesn't look like it's doing anything. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some Ulthuin Grey. And once again, we're just gonna very gently start stippling this, but we're gonna be much more targeted with this now around little areas with the author in grey like this just to give it a little bit more visual interest
So with that done, you can see a very clear distinction between what we've done on this side and what we haven't on this side. You can see how much more this looks like lovely weathered stone and this is still our kind of shaded area. But this area right here looks fantastic. So what we're gonna do, just to finish off this side for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Screaming Skull and we're gonna, again, we're on our dry brush, only this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna, like we would normally with a dry brush, is we're just gonna take off the majority of it. And then we're gonna apply a very gentle dry brush over the top of our stonework. Just like this, there's gonna add a little bit of extra to some of those edges. It's also gonna add an area, area, air of a little bit of a slightly dirtier finish. Screaming skull. Do a bit of pro twizzling there. So with that done, we've got our stone looking pretty awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly do this side in exactly the same way, starting with some Dawnstone. I'm just gonna start stippling that all over. And then I'm gonna get the Administratum Gray on there, then the Ulthuan Gray. And the Screaming Skull. So with that done, what we're now gonna do, just as a final kind of highlight, if you will, is we're gonna take some pallid witch flesh and this is gonna reinforce that grubby nature, but also just add our final kind of spot highlight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add this to the kind of areas of interest that we wanna add a little bit of extra brightness to. So I'm just gonna go around these kind of corners like this and just around here like that. Just in a circular motion a couple of little interesting light points. Grab a little bit more. If you're doing this on, say, like a rising building, you could do this towards the tips of the spires. As you can see, it just gives us a little bit of area just for the light to catch off of.
And so with that final dry brush applied, this weathered stone dwarven dais is now finished and it looks absolutely fantastic. Full credit goes to Dark Fantastic Mills for the amazing piece of scenery because now I can finally fulfill my dreams of having a really nice looking spinny shot like this and I can set up the final moments of Loras Grimm versus Bellacor. Maybe even change his fate. <laughs> Amazing piece, really easy techniques to use, and you could use this across a multitude of different scenery pieces. So, very, very applicable to the wider Warhammer range. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further, like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.